Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Topat here. When it comes to the world of Street Fighter, the iconic franchise has delivered many, many legendary characters, with the likes of Ryu, Ken, Guile, Chun-Li and more quickly establishing themselves as household names in the early 90s. The Street Fighter 2 roster would become one of the most memorable lineups in history, with a variety of these big stars returning to the fold to do battle once more in the Street Fighter Alpha games. These lot had been in Japanese animes, manga, an American cartoon, and even a live action movie, but in February of 1997, Capcom would decide enough is enough and it's time for a change. So the next game in the series, Street Fighter 3 New Generation, would feature a roster of mostly new fighters. Leading the charge for this so-called new generation was the fighter known as Alex, a character who Capcom were looking to place as the new star of the Street Fighter franchise. But keeping this in mind, why do most people not give a crap about Alex, or in worst cases, not know who he even is? Let's try and learn more about the Lex Luger of the Street Fighter brand as we look back at the entire history of one of Capcom's biggest marketing mishaps. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the embarrassing failure of Alex. Yeah! With the explosion in popularity of the 1991 title Street Fighter II The World Warrior, everyone was wondering how long it would be before Capcom gave us Street Fighter III. Rather than promptly jumping on a sequel like the company seemed to consistently do with their popular Mega Man series, instead the Japanese arcade giant would begin to release iteration after iteration of the same game, giving us Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and more. Throughout this era for the franchise, while the brand had quickly picked up a strong worldwide following, Street Fighter 2, with its colourful cast, never had a true main playable character, as fans, even from the first iteration, had the choice of 8 different fighters. It appears though that in Japanese media from the period that Ryu would often be marketed as the main star of the property, while in the United States and other Western markets, it seems that instead, the G.I. Joe-like Guile would be the most heavily pushed down our throats instead. While Guy was placed as the leader of the Street Fighters in the US cartoon series and played by Jean-Claude Van Damme in the lead role in the live action movie, it seems that after Street Fighter 2, Capcom seemed to give up on this heavy push. In fact, in the game's prequel that came in 1995 known as Street Fighter Alpha, Guile was nowhere to be seen, but the game did continue to build on Ryu's story, who had been playable in the series since the 1987 original. When we finally got Street Fighter 3 in 1997, the team at Capcom made the decision that they wanted to market a new main character within the series, one of which that was designed to be more appealing to an American audience than ever before. While it was recognised that Ryu was already established stateside, which is not surprising considering martial arts are more popular there than in Japan, Capcom wanted a character who was even more beloved. So what better way was there to do that than conceive a fighter who the Japanese development team thought oozed the Americana? Capcom producer Tomoshi Sadamoto felt that in order to appeal most heavily to the US market, the character cannot be a martial artist, but instead should be a WWF style professional wrestler. A huge muscle bound athlete who can throw opponents around the stage while throwing in a muscle flex just for good measure. The man tasked with designing such a character was the by this point legendary Akiman Yasuda, who had illustrated many of the characters for Street Fighter 2. Early designs depict Alex as a police officer who used to be a professional wrestler, with this element of his character eventually being dropped. Like many professional wrestlers, Alex would be given red body paint, which Akiman has joked reminds him of the main character from the Devilman manga series. It is said though that the biggest influence that would be taken when creating this character and his hulking frame would be from the most famous professional wrestler of all time, Hulk Hogan, which I guess would be the logical thing to do if you are looking to create a character who could make a company a ridiculous amount of money. You see, Hulk Hogan is well known the world over, even in Japan where he would have spells of his career appearing in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So even Japanese fans of Street Fighter would understand this bulging creation. Like Hogan, Alex would feature a brute force style showcasing his raw power 
with his Street Fighter 3 pre-match animations referencing the Hulksters with his poses. Both of these wrestlers rip their clothing off before engaging in a match, and in a later iteration of Street Fighter 3, the opening features Alex and Hugo even mimicking Hogan and Andre's iconic stare down from WrestleMania 3. For extra measure, and in an attempt to make him even more beloved to the American public, like Garo before him, Alex would be made a military man, ticking boxes further with regards to everything typical they felt that the US would love. Interestingly, this would not be the first time where Capcom would take influence from Hogan either, as plenty of references to him can be found throughout their Slam Master wrestling games, which also feature the rather Alex-looking Biff Slankovic as their main star. According to Alex's background story, he is a fighter who lives in New York City, who became an orphan at a young age. He was instead raised by his father's friend Tom, who would bring him up in the city alongside his own daughter, Patricia. Tom, the military veteran, as Alex was growing up, was able to train him daily at the gym he owns, teaching him every fighting skill he knew. With Alex first appearing in all three iterations of Street Fighter 3, according to accompanying material known as The Secret File, prior to the events of the game, Alex would compete in a tournament whereby he would be declared the winner, facing off against and defeating Balrog in the finals. Alex would enter the World Warrior Tournament due to its mysterious sponsor known as Gil critically injuring Alex's father figure Tom. While Tom was concerned for Alex's safety, he gave him the seal of approval to enter the competition, so that he could potentially face off against Gil himself. In these games, Alex fights using a brutal combination of wrestling and kickboxing, often relying on throws and powerhouse variations of street brawling and kickboxing manoeuvres. This grappler can use his sheer size to unleash devastating heavy punches and kicks, but is also surprisingly speedy for his enormous size. Amongst his moveset, he can utilise the likes of power bombs, spiral DDTs, as well as what he calls an air stampede, a move that involves leaping into the air then landing feet first on an opponent's head. He can also perform an air knee smash, the Ric Flair-esque flash chop, and a technique known as the slash elbow. Perhaps his most famous move seen in Street Fighter 3 is a super art known as the hyper bomb, a trademark flashy display that sees him performing a waist lock before backward rolling into two successive German suplexes before transitioning into a powerbomb. Beautiful. I'd like to see Hulk Hogan pull that off, brother. But that is just the tip of the iceberg with regards to what Alex is capable of in the heat of battle. So, through competing in the tournament in Street Fighter 3, in Alex's story he would win every match until he would get to face off against Gil. On this occasion, Alex is victorious, but would make the virtuous decision not to kill his enemy. Upon returning home, he discovers that Tom has managed to miraculously recover from his injuries, with in the meantime, Gil becoming intrigued with the military wrestler, noting there is something very special about him. As strongly as this wrestler is booked, though, by Capcom in Street Fighter 3 New Generation, it is of note that despite multiple Street Fighter 3 iterations, the Sega Dreamcast trilogy sold pretty terribly in comparison to previous Street Fighter games. So Alex was not able to become the big star that Capcom had previously envisioned. While he picked up the victory against a big bad villain, Gil, within New Generation, he no longer needed to seek revenge. By the time Third Strike was released, Ryu would canonically encounter and have a match against Ryu, the face of the previous generation of fighters. In a moment reminiscent of Hogan's controversial return at WrestleMania 9, in this instance the torch would not be passed to a new generation competitor, but instead would be held onto by the old guard. You see, Ryu would defeat Alex in combat, with Alex being unable to counter any of his blows. In fact, Ryu's victory was a complete whitewash, with him embarrassing the muscled athlete, encouraging him to hone his skills and seek out worthy opponents. His ending does show the pair about to do battle again, but with his story concluding here, and this being the latest point in the current Street Fighter timeline, the victor is unclear. But bearing in mind how we are now in 2022, and Ryu is still being promoted as the face of Capcom, I am going to assume victory for the Japanese veteran. This all means it is possible to draw an important conclusion from this. It appears that through Capcom's efforts to create the next Hulk Hogan, they would commit the very same mistakes that the WWF had committed earlier in the decade when they tried to pull exactly the same stunt. 
in the professional wrestling era that the wrestling company marketed as their new generation, they would try and position the muscular, towering, all-American Lex Luger to be the next Hulk Hogan of wrestling. But this whole plan backfired and pound out horribly, as most of the time you cannot simply manufacture a star with the X Factor in order to lead a pack especially if they have been designed to replicate someone else's success. For this reason, Alex very much is the Lex Luger of Street Fighter, rather than the Hogan like they intended. And he was unable to get over to the level of which Capcom expected of him, and as a result, the mantle was taken back by Ryu. Just like Hulk Hogan would take back his throne from the flailing new generation at WrestleMania 9. Pro wrestling history would repeat itself in the Street Fighter world. Being pushed down the card, Alex's next few years in the real world were not exactly great for him, with his next planned playable video game appearance being cancelled altogether. The game in question was Capcom Fighting All Stars, the scrapped 3D polygonal fighting game that was set to feature a crossover of different Capcom athletes. The remains of this cancelled work would be recycled to create the 2D fighting game known as Capcom Fighting Evolution, an underwhelming title and one of the least memorable Capcom fighters of all time. The game features a mixed roster of characters from Darkstalkers, Red Earth, Street Fighter 2, Alpha and Street Fighter 3, with Alex being one of the poor souls who would represent Team 3. To be fair though, completing the game as Alex does result in one very cool moment. With comic strip-like imagery of him wrestling against the legendary mayor Mike Hagger of the Final Fight games. Aside from this, he was restricted to cameos in the likes of SNK vs Capcom Match of the Millennium and Capcom vs SNK 2 where he could be seen in the Nairobi stage. While Alex would miss out completely in being included as a fighter in Street Fighter 4, he would surface as a playable fighter in 2008's Tatsunoko vs Capcom the bizarre Nintendo Wii crossover that sees a Capcom lineup compete with Japanese anime characters. To give Alex some more credit here and to indicate that Capcom had not given up hope completely on him, he is included amongst a roster that is pretty thin when it comes to including Street Fighter characters, so to make it to the dance here was pretty impressive for a fighter who wasn't even in Street Fighter 4. In another crossover, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, while being discluded once more as a selectable fighter, he does appear on a billboard with a text comically stating on it, I will be back, indicating his significance had not completely dwindled. For Street Fighter V, a game that canonically takes place between Street Fighter 4 and 3, for the early demos Alex would be nowhere to be seen once more, but would soon be confirmed as a DLC fighter at the PlayStation Experience solidifying his grand return to the franchise for the first time since Third Strike. He will be made available to play in Street Fighter V as of March 30th, 2016. In Street Fighter V, Alex mechanically functions very similar to his previous appearances, retaining his trademark special moves. With 3 and 5 being different though, his Hyperbomb Super Art would now be his EX special, but he would also gain new moves such as the Power Drop, consisting of two backdrop suplexes and the head crush. Further to this, he now also has a unique V skill known as the Overhaul, a V trigger known as the Raid Shift and a V Reversal which is the iconic Big Boot, a manoeuvre taken straight from Hulk Hogan's playbook, the very man that Luger, I mean Alex, was so desperate to become. As for his positioning in the main Street Fighter V Shadow Fall story, he is first seen in an exhibition tag team wrestling match, tagging up with Laura against R. Mika and Zangief. This match never does get underway though, as the arena falls into darkness due to M. Bison's black moons. He is seen later in the story in his trailer car, whereby he accidentally mistakes Dao Sim to be a mugger, leading to a fight between the two. Now I could make some Hogan Gorka related joke here about Alex being a racist, but that's too lower hanging fruit, even for me. Alex would also have his own prologue in the game. This sees him wake up in an unfamiliar surrounding, being tested on in a lab by Shadaloo operative and Saget replacement Fang. Fang performs simulation experiments on him, making him fight against artificial versions of characters from Street Fighter's universe. Finally, he even has to face off against a simulated Ryu, even becoming victorious on this occasion. However, since this version of the iconic fighter was just a simulation, I guess that means that to Capcom, he is still no more than a massive jabroni.
Aside from appearing in a couple of comics, that just about rounds up this fighter's impact on the world of video games so far. Now, being conceived 25 years ago for the release of Street Fighter 3, I think it has become more than clear that Alex never was the man to lead a new generation. His epic defeat at the hands of Ryu that occurs in his ending at the conclusion of Third Strike could not emphasise this any further, and his limited presence in Street Fighter games since certainly shows that his position has significantly been scaled back. The man really is the Lex Luger of Street Fighter characters. Maybe he could salvage his career by jumping the guard rail and showing up in Mortal Kombat instead. At least he would make an impact that way. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the embarrassing failure of Alex. Let me know in the comment section how much you hate me for ripping on your favourite Street Fighter character and which roster member that you would like to see me rip into next. Be sure to check out my backlog, spotlighting other individuals from this fantastic franchise and make sure you hit that subscriber button if this is your first time here. Videos like this are in part made possible due to the wonderful people who back my work over on Patreon. So without further ado, special thank yous and shout outs go out to... A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Hero Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Sr., Rowan Dinch to Evan Border, Philip Manth, Azarakai, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs SNK, Hermes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang He, Enormous Stitz, Langs the Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Flaming Renee, Marvin Aaron Liga, TOG Driver, Luis Viant, John Bates, David Ball, Chris Fisk, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs my work on the Patreon platform. I am eternally grateful for your contributions to what I do. In the words of Elvis Presley, thank you very much. Yeah, cheerio.